Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today we are working on another collage kind of video and we're kind of enlarging some of these flowers as well. So it is a really exciting one. We, I've, I've really been enjoying using collage to look at color notes and also to kind of enlarge some of these flowers. So we were gonna do some daffodils as well, but they were a little bit ambitious for this week. So we will work on those later on. But uh, yeah, this is one of the ones we did in the last video. So I'll link the first video to this um, underneath. I also have some templates and things from that video that you can um, use at the end of this video. So uh, yeah, you can see here that we kind of made uh, this kind of enlarged version and kind of looking at different ways to depict these flowers as well and it's been a really nice way to get those creative juices flowing as well so we'll start with one flower and then we'll move on to some others as well so uh, you can see here this was where I was first just kind of jotting down and noting these flowers as they were blooming uh, probably in May somewhere around May so yeah but today we're going to first of all look at this little flower and I'll show you some footage of it as we get into the video but it's a little yellow flower and so I want to go through my palettes and kind of find all these different yellows that I have cool yellows warm yellows so you could see they're like a fluorescent yellow the uh, French earth I've also like so I'm just kind of wetting colors that I think I might use there. Um, also more peachy ones, a few kind of more green ones, some golds, some kind of browns and coppers. Okay, so like last time, we have three different types of paper, a vellum, a crepe paper, and a cotton paper. So these are all linked in the last video, so I'll just link that video below. So it takes quite a, quite a long time to <laughs> um, link everything. So you can see I've also thought of another yellow there, which is basically like a lemon yellow mixed with the Daniel Smith pearlescent white. And yeah, you can see I'm kind of doing some more of the... Uh, more whiter colors as well like the kind of white grays so to start with when I'm doing something like this I like to kind of put all these different colors on my palette so you can see I'm mixing some of the lemon yellow with white uh, and I just like to have a variety of those things already available on my palette and then I can kind of dip into those and mix them and kind of see what is available there it's really helpful to have a, kind of a working palette uh, there available so that you can like dip into it and it becomes uh, easier to mix some things I'd say. So you can see I'm getting like some Sedona there which is the uh, like uh, burnt sienna and just kind of mixing all these different things. I'm putting some pearl white in there to get some of that sparkle and yeah so i am now going into the actual painting the papers so we're just gonna first of all uh, paint these papers and let that dry and use some of these for some collage we'll look at like the how to actually uh, draw the flower so a bit tongue-tied we had some coyotes out here before as well and we've had some snakes this week so it's been a bit quite a uh, quite a big week um yeah anyway so yeah you can see that as well as like I kind of showed you how like to use the palette like that but like that would be so if I was doing more of a painting but you can see how large these papers are so I'm kind of just dipping straight into these colors again and covering this whole page so my idea for doing these collages is to think about and kind of find color notes kind of doing it a little bit more so when I'm painting uh, sometimes I feel like I'm too considered 
and sort of careful and doing this kind of helps me to break out of that so uh, yeah One thing that I am doing is kind of considering what I want to use. So I know that I'm going to want some deeper values and, and some brighter things and some softer things, some sparkly things. So I kind of already know that is some of the um, what I'm looking for. So I have that in mind when I'm making these sheets and I don't want the blending to be too blended I kind of want you can see here like I want these different colors to show up so then I've crumpled up the paper this is the cotton paper and then I've kind of dry brushed over the top with some of the Sedona with some of the sparkle and then just left that to dry So you can see that I'm using these yellows, but you can use this process for any color that you know might be inspiring you, like a, a flower that you may want to uh, create. Uh, I have been just really inspired this week by like safflower colors and like golden honeycombs and buttercups and uh, all these really beautiful yellows. The the kind of vibrancy of the evening primrose and um yeah daffodils so even wheat is kind of in that color range in that spectrum of the kind of yellows so one nice thing to do would be even to google or just make a list of uh, flowers that you think kind of or things that remind you of a color so it might not might not be flowers um, you know even like for white like I'm thinking porcelain and uh, buttermilk and you know kind of different things like that so eggshell so um, yeah just you know creating kind of even a list so you can see here this is my little uh, sketch of this flower so what I really like about it it's kind of like a little pinwheel or like a little ferris wheel just in the garden like full of sunshine so very tiny and I'll show you some footage but I tried to do like these little sketches uh, life-size but I'm kind of showing you here the shapes and then we will like uh, uh, actually sketch this out again as well so um, this is a carandash I can't remember what this is called but I love this fluorescent yellow side it's very oily but uh, and creamy so I'm just kind of starting with this kind of pinwheel in the center here and then starting with this the front petal and these two kind of half moons that that go below it and then these side petals here I like to do one and then the other one so you kind of get those fairly similar and then again putting on the bottoms of these petals here uh, the as you kind of go around those shapes get a little bit thinner and a little bit taller and kind of curve a little bit more and then at the back here we just kind of have three half moon shapes as well so I have did I I have done a few uh, templates I'm not sure if I did this as a template or not but um, so you can see here that I am just kind of doing these little tiny, they had kind of these little small leaves here. 
And you can see I'm just doing it on this scrap of paper that I had. So you could even uh, sketch on these papers that we've just created as well. That would also be really lovely. So I'm thinking about how large I want the flower and kind of where I want to place it on the page. So I start with this kind of center wheel. Uh, we actually end up moving this, but yeah, this is exactly the same way I start it. I put it on the other page though, so I can kind of spread it out a little bit more. And then I'm looking at this paper here. So I know that I want the center petal, like the front center one, to be kind of this most vibrant part of the paper here. So what you see first, you know, is going to be this really bright, bright yellow. And then um, I'm still kind of thinking my way through this uh, with kind of the rules of form. So I want the, the center one to be this brighter yellow. To the left, I'm going to go a little bit softer yellow like the highlights. And to the right, a little bit more of these deeper, um, more beige yellows. So more like where the shadows would be, would be kind of the French ochre kind of thing. So you can see here again, I'm looking at these other papers. And for the bottom petals, I'm using one crepe paper on the right and then I'm using one as the vellum on the left for each bottom section so I'm kind of keeping uh, the, that similar around the flower so the three different papers the top one's cotton the bottom um, left is vellum and the bottom right is crepe paper sort of to create that textural uh, difference but also to kind of give a little bit of continuity Okay, so you can see that this is coming together and I've also done a little kind of part on the side there where it, when the petals fall off, it kind of dries into the kind of just the spokes of the middle of the flower. So, uh, but they're also interesting, the kind of like little star shapes and things. So then in the center here, instead of kind of adding some more paper, I just added some pastel. And then I also go in and add some watercolor. I'm kind of also just taking some liberty here. I put uh, like a bit of a different center in and things like that. But I'm also kind of lifting the sides of the petals to add the pastel underneath and kind of just again using this as an exploration of color. And yeah. The nice thing about working through something like this is uh, kind of looking a bit more closely at the subject and kind of thinking your way through creative problems and also kind of looking at like I really am always inspired and interested to look at color notes and how colors work together and uh, when you're painting like the little yellow flower uh, it's difficult to kind of think your way through even like the shadows what colors they would be what colors the highlights would be and things like that so I really enjoy doing something like this to kind of allow all those colors to play uh, on the paper and kind of in this um, structure and then kind of see how maybe some of those things could be integrated like also so here you go you can see this little flower the the these ones are not really in good shape I think they're kind of all on their way out but um, hopefully you get a little bit of a sense here of kind of what it was it there's only kind of four of the spokes left but it had like I think six or seven and um, 
yeah, they kind of have this shape and then, yeah, anyway. I mean, you can see there, so these are also what's um, flowering at the minute. We've got so much Queen Anne's lace, but you can, you'll can you be able to see in some of these shots that kind of dotted through um, the bottom there, there's this little bird's foot um, trefoil. And yeah, it's just like these little tiny rays of sunshine in the grass. The bees really love it. So uh, yeah, what was I saying? So it's interesting kind of looking at a flower like that. How do I color the shadows? Do I want to tint it a little bit more green? Do I want to tint it a little bit more towards peach? Do I want to just go with neutrals? And yeah, it's really just nice to kind of see and think about these. Like I said, we'll do the daffodils. I just ran out of time uh, to get those done this week. But um, we'll do those in a whole nother video. You can see here like there's quite a lot of it in this patch here. So, and there was this amazing electric blue dragonfly there. But uh, yeah, the, the camera can't kind of pick up how vibrant and really nice the uh, this little flower looks in the grass. Like it's really, really vibrant. So it's a very happy flower. Um, so anyway, then I just went back in here. I've got some Sedona and I am going around kind of behind the pastel here and just adding in some of the more shadows and, and kind of finishing this off. And then we'll just kind of look at the difference between this one you can see and what we did last week. And then we're going to start our next flower. Okay, so I love this plant for the sweep of the branches and so I really wanted to think about that. It's taken me a while to think about even how to do this in watercolour because the branches are really dark but you want to be able to break up the branches and put the flowers on there but then you don't want to have this really dark kind of background behind them and I don't necessarily want like pencil going through the flowers so what I decided to do here was um, use kind of a shadow color and so I'm using um, the ice blue from Schmincke so mixing just mix like a bit of blue with a white and I'm creating the sweep of those branches first and then I'm putting some of those uh, flowers on and I'll kind of explain a little bit more how I'm painting those in a minute and then I am just adding the flowers right on top of that so I'm already sort of getting a little bit of the color intonation that I'm looking for and this is when it's really helpful to have already had those pre-mixes of the different yellows on the palette because I can just pull from some of those you can see I've already used some of those up but um this is the kind of place that I would do that so that I'm getting lots of different mixes. And let's see. I just start building building it up and layering in different colors. So you can see that I'm putting some of the fluorescent yellow into some of these other uh, pearlescent yellows, the lemon yellows, the French 
uh, ochre and then I'm also putting in some of the Sedona here to kind of give those little bits of the shading and the kind of the depth on, of the range of color that we're looking for and then I can go back in with so you can see I'm just using a tiny brush and I'm just kind of sweeping over one side of the branch and getting in this kind of wisp of a line here so I really like the fact that that there's already kind of this shadow of the line and then I'm just kind of really lightly and slightly denoting it because I feel like that's kind of the magic of this branch of like the bush and the branches is that when you see them there's just these really beautiful kind of wafting branches that kind of just go off into the distance so I want to capture some of that I don't uh, necessarily want like a heavy line for the branches and then I just keep going around you could see that I pulled in some mint green there I'm also putting in some of these circle bouquet, bouquet that we were working on in the last few videos so as kind of a background thinking about again that like idea of a festival and then I've put in this butterfly so I'll show you a couple of different butterflies that inspired this one and we will also go over kind of how to draw this. I also have a um, like a template for this as well at the end. So but you can see that I'm not getting very detailed with the butterfly like I'm not putting in a lot of veining on the wings or anything like that. I'm putting in a few spots kind of on the side and you'll see from the butterfly that it's inspired by. Uh, I've taken this kind of from there and then I'm putting in uh, just some pearl white so the whole point of this exercise is kind of just to look at color and so this is not necessarily something where I would go into too much detail uh, you can see here this is the Copic I've been loving this one this is the warm gray uh, point one so I'm just going along and outlining some of that um, the pencil with this I like it because it's a similar color to the pencil but it is more permanent so So you can see two of the butterflies here we've seen so many really nice ones but they're so elusive and hard to get on camera this little one was so cute though um, and the color of the blue so yeah anyway um, I kind of combined the kind of more the larger shape of the black one with the color of this little blue one so yeah and then I just went in uh, and kind of filled in some of this area with just yellow mixed with white so I made a very pale kind of yellow to almost look more like uh, shadows and kind of very soft softly filling in those gaps so I did sketch this in more detail uh, in my perpetual nature journal which I'll show you again like towards the end of the year uh, so yeah this was it's nice to kind of do this like really loose version and yeah I'm just going to show you here this is uh, the butterfly so
So you can see that this page is very much inspired by these like soft blue skies and yeah. Uh, and you can see that the yellow, it was softer as well than like on the, um, the other one, the collage one that we did. So I'm just kind of showing you here when I do the branch there, these little flowers have four petals. So, and they're kind of pointy petals. So I, I often like, I'll sort of do four strokes and it may be two on one side of the branch or three on one side and one on the other. As it goes towards the top, there's only like two or one. And then sometimes like I'll pull them right out. So one, two, three, four, kind of pulling it out from the branch there to just give it a little bit more um, volume in the painting as well. Uh, yeah, so and just kind of adding in, I might just add in one or two uh, here and there where I think. Uh, and so there, yeah, that's how you can kind of see like I'm, I'm sometimes I'm overlapping the color, sometimes I'm adding it in uh, extra on the on the side there. And then I just go back in and continue to kind of add in colors while it's wet so that that can blend and mix a little bit as well. And again, so you can see here that I'm using a different color as the base shadow color. So I was using a more peach color. In this one here, I've used even a softer color. And uh, yeah, so you can, you know, try using your favorite color. If it's a, if your favorite color is more of a vibrant and a darker color, um, try using a really watered down version of it to get like that softness of the background and then kind of adding in just all these color notes so uh, you can see that I used little bits of the collage paper that we made in the beginning and I just cut out these very simple kind of little almost leaf shapes just kind of one side and two and just stuck those um, on there to sort of give that a little bit more volume and movement as well so I'm just kind of showing you through the pages here uh, next to it in the journal and I so this is all this, you know, sketchbook and I never showed this one, but this is a page that I did for kind of like the color a day uh, project. And I did this one in June. I, you can see I started it like two weeks into June, but I just really wanted a jump start, And so I started kind of again, uh, just adding colors there. And then as the kind of couple of weeks went on, I added um, the shoe and yeah, just kind of different things. Some of the, the line work for the florals there. And yeah, it would even be really interesting to like say, pick this for Scythia or a different flower and paint it kind of quite loosely every day for a week and just see how that changes and how like the different colors that you feel inspired to use every day. I think that would be quite interesting as well. So, okay, so you can see, uh, yeah, we're, we're nearly, you can't see, but we are nearly, well, you can see from the time, but we're nearly wrapping up the video and here are just some of the, uh, uh, you know templates from last week so you can screenshot these and print them out and or trace them and you know anything like that but uh, let's see so after we did this I was thinking about it and I wanted to do kind of a night version of it like uh, what would it look like kind of in the evening light so I've been working on a few nocturnes which I'll show you in another video as well I've got quite a few videos lined up but just not enough time to kind of get everything everything finished but yeah so I wanted to kind of have a little bit of color play with these purples and lavenders and yeah so I did the same process. I started with a mix of Kaput Mortuum white and a little bit of orange in there to give it a pink tinge. And then you can see that I kind of added all the different purples and then I made this little bit of uh, paper and again just cut out these uh, tiny little kind of pointy petals. They're more like just little leaf shapes but they are kind of more what the petals in this uh, Kind of bush look like 
and so and it also just kind of really gives it this kind of structural element and movement and yeah so then I finished this one and I really love kind of the the thought process and the colors and kind of again like I was saying like you could try this every day and you could come up with a different uh, color scheme and a way to think about adding color notes in a really kind of fun and again like thinking about this floral festival just a festive way um yeah so i hope you enjoyed that i am also going to give you a little sneak peek at the end of just the website so it's coming along it's i mean everything just yeah anyway but it is coming along hopefully it'll be quite nice so i will see you guys soon have a wonderful week bye